Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta and our look at the Emerald Tablets. Today, we're looking at the fifth tablet, which is called the Dweller of Unal. Now, if this is your first time with us or your first time going through the Emerald Tablets with us, I will place all of the other Emerald Tablets parts down in the description box below. We've been going in consecutive order. Also, we will continually be going through this on Aquarius Rising Africa on Mondays at 10 a.m. Eastern time. So you, you're welcome to join us there as well. And it, again, it's a live show, so you can join in and make live comments while we're going through this. Now, the interesting thing about the fifth tablet is that it is considered to be one of the most mysterious tablets. And I've actually got, so I have Doriel's commentary, which I'm going through, and I've got another person's commentary up on my computer screen right now because I wanted to see what other people had to say as well. Um, I have my own ideas and theories around some of the topics that Thoth is going to be speaking about in this fifth tablet. But of course, as always, opinions, are like assholes everyone's got one and they're always subject to change and ebb and, ebb and flow as we uh learn more information as more truths come out so if you hear someone beside me that is my dog um so anyway let's go ahead and get started so again the emerald tablet five is called the dweller of unal and it is one of the most mysterious of all the emerald tablets so thoth says oft dream i of buried atlantis lost in the ages that have passed into night. Eon on eon thou existed in beauty, a light shining through the darkness of night. Mighty in power, ruling the earthborn, lord of the earth in Atlantis' day, king of the nations, master of wisdom, light through Suntel, keeper of the way. Dwelt in the temple, the master of Unal, light of the earth in Atlantis' day. Master he from the cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among men. Not as earthborn, he from beyond us, son of the cycle, advanced beyond men. Know ye, O man, that harlot, the master, was never one with children of men. Far in the past time, when Atlantis first grew as power, appeared there one with the key of wisdom, showing the light to all. Showed he to all man the path of attainment way of the light that flows among men mastering darkness leading the man soul upward to heights that were one with the light divided the kingdom he into sections ten they were ruled by the children of men upon another built he a temple built but not by the children of men out of the ether called he in substance molded and formed by the power of yotolan into the forms he built with his mind, which it kind of brings back to the fourth tablet where we spoke a lot about how our thoughts talked a lot about how our consciousness creates our reality. Mile upon mile, it covered the island, space upon space it grew in its might, black yet not black, but dark like the space time, deep in its heart, the essence of light. Swiftly the temple grew into being, molded and shaped by the word of the dweller, called from the formless into the form. So let's stop there and let's kind of go through uh, Doriel's commentary and then talk about some other people's hypothesis on who some of these people are that are mentioned, like Hortel and some of these places that are mentioned, so forth. So Doriel says, perhaps this perhaps is the most mystical of the tablets, contains, containing also information hitherto withheld from man. Thoth is musing on the glories of Atlantis as its zenith as compared to the world around him at that time. Dweller on Unal, the master Horlet, was ruler of all earth. Through the cosmic power he wielded, though he did not intervene in the government of nations unless it was absolutely necessary. Harlot was not entirely of the cycle but was one of the extensions of one of the lords of the cycles manifesting on Earth's surface to fulfill certain necessary functions, helping to establish knowledge and harmony among men. He established the kingdoms of Atlantis, dividing them among the races and placing the highest developed ones as kings over the rest of the men. He then built the temple on Unal, 
from the ether or primal substance, molding it to the form by his will, using the power of utolin, which Doriel says is not translatable, to hold in its form. The temple was square and had three miles to a side and was a mile high. It did not truly rest in the third dimensional space, but in the ninth dimensional before the blackness. No weapon from the third dimension could harm or even touch it, for anything cast against it will be lost in the curves of the ninth dimension. It had within its heart the essence of light, and from there was the gateway to a mente, where the flower of life burns eternally, which a lot of this is referencing back to um, our previous tablet. So again, if you have not read the previous tablets, especially the first and the second tablet, the first and the second tablet are kind of what the who, what, where, when, why, how, of the Emerald Tablets, like who thought this, what what had happened when Atlantis fell, all that kind of stuff. So if you have, if you missed that, I would suggest going back and e either reading the first and second tablet for yourself or watching the video, my video where we go through the first and second tablet. Um, Unal was like a town in Atlantis. Um, again, first tablet goes into that, all that kind of stuff. Now, it's interesting because we know that Hartel the person known as Hartel or the being known as Hartel is, is kind of like, I don't want to say the god of this this earth, but kind of like the the manager, if you will. Like he's the manager of the earth or something like that. Now, another commentary I was looking at, and I will put this link in the description box, was saying that they believe that, the Har that Hartel is actually the angel Gabriel. Um, I maybe. Because we know that Hortel is trying to help man as man ascends higher into enlightenment. Um, here, this person says Hortel is the inter multidimensional being in charge of Earth and the enlightenment of man. Definitely not, definitely an archangel, most probably Gabriel. Let me go ahead and share this with you guys up on the screen so you, you too can see. Now, I have a question mark over this. Because we know that Lucifer is actually the god of, of our planet right now. However, this could be in reference to strictly when Atlantis was around. Um, Lucifer has not always been the god of this planet. Um, we know that Atlantis, especially if you again watch the first and second uh, discussion over the, these tablets, Atlantis was the time of, of the Anunnaki. Um, and if you've if you've watched our organic portal episodes, which I will place those in this description box as well, if you have not, the organic portal episode were the pre-Adamic. So the or organic portals are the bad humans of the earth, the humans that have no upper chakras, 50% of the population was here before the Anunnaki came to our planet. Those of us who are souled being, S-O-U-L-E-D, souled beings, are the descendants of Atlantis, meaning that we have uh, all these different cosmic, a hodgepodge of different uh, galactic DNA. And so it could have been during this time of Atlantis, because Atlantis was structured to bring enlightenment to man. So it could be that an archangel like Gabriel or... My, you know, any good being was the manager of Atlantis before the fall of Atlantis. Uh, we know that during Tartaria, Lucifer was not in charge. Uh, we know that during the mud floods, that's the start of Gog and Magog, where we are right now in the timeline, Gog and Magog, that um, Lucifer was released and was put back in charge of the earth. So it could just be that Hartel, if Hartel was one of the archangels, was the manager of a certain time period of Earth's history. But we do know that Hartel was a multidimensional being. So he would have had to been like an angel, like a fourth density positive being. Like Lucifer is a multidimensional being. Like the angel, the demons, the angels, they're all multidimensional beings. We are as well. We are just not aware of it like they are. So just thought that was interesting. Now, this person on this one goes into the divided kingdoms. He, the sections 10, where they ruled by the children of men, which we spoke about. Now, I am not, I don't buy this. I don't buy this geography that this person has put up on their commentary. Again, I'll leave the link down in the description box below for you to look at it as well. Um, I just don't think, we, we just don't know. We have no fucking clue what our real geography is. Um, I absolutely, at this point, from what I've researched and look, looked at into Tartaria, do believe that Egypt is not in Africa. Again, there's this great YouTube channel here that is totally dedicated to, to disproving the myth 
that Egypt is in Africa. And he calls the Egypt in Africa the amusement park. Um, Egypt is here in the United States, as is Israel. The real Israel is here in the United States, according to the history of Tartaria. So I think this is all bunk right here. This is this is a, a geography based off of what we've been taught by the controllers. And this so this no fault to the person who wrote this, you know, 10 years ago, I would have believed this myself. So no fault to them. But I just wanted to point that out. All right. The dweller used the word in molding the form of the temple, the word being then expressed as Yotal. Within the temple, the dweller erected mighty machines of many kinds, forming them out of primeval matter and started them into the motion by his will. Thus ac accutated, they would run forever for the will which supplied their motive power is an external thing. So yes, again, this goes back to the fourth tablet that we spoke about last time. Everything is is generated by thought. Thought is vibration. The word is also so the again, the three uh, elements of Ayurveda are breath, food and vibration, which is words are thought. They're vo both vibration. And back in the fourth tablet, Thoth was telling us that we are the creators of this chaos, you know, and that, that we know that, like, we know that as, as spiritual beings, that everything in the nature that we see is something that is the Shakti, it's the creation of the soul. And so that's what he's saying is that, again, he's reiterating this idea that all of the matter, the nature, our bodies, our earth, our, our lives was a Shakti was a creation of the Shiva, which is the soul, as are Sanskrit words I'm using, the Parak Prakriti and Purusha, right? And it's it's the whole purpose, the whole purpose of this is for the soul to know itself. And as we've talked about with the organic beings or the pre-Adamic beings that don't have really have so they have like micro souls they don't have their upper chakras it stops at manipura the third chakra they have a really those are people have a really hard time differentiating between their identity as a person and their soul right the soul is the silence within you the soul is not your identity this that you're like for me as bryce i am my my existence as bryce in this life is the shakti is the expression of my soul for this time, right? So when my soul was coming to earth again, I sat down with my guides, with my managers, or if you will, um, assistant managers, and I created almost like a, a lesson plan, a college lesson plan for what I needed to refine. In this. So where my soul needed to be refined. And so I created an existence with this identity to experience what I needed to experience so my soul can be refined. Not so Bryce could be refined. Bryce is just, you know, our lives are so short here. It's just a flash of a, you know, very, very quick, right? So it's just something for my soul to understand through this avatar of Bryce. But Bryce myself isn't real. Like none of us are real. It's all a hologram, right? What's real is the soul. Right. And so and I, I find people who are organic portals have a real hard time, like the, the, the identity of Bryce. When we talk about things like the ego, which is the false sense of self, the ego is the identity of Bryce. And that's the that's the story. That's not the soul. So with that being said, when you understand the two and you can understand the difference between the two, you the, the ego is still there for the time period while you're in your body. But it, it can be put in its place, if that makes sense. Um, I also want to reiterate, too, I had somebody leave a comment that they were told all of their chakras were balanced. Honey, if someone told you all your chakras were balanced, all your chakras were balanced, you just got scammed. Right. So our chakra system, even though we've all got for sold beings, S-U-L-E-D, sold beings, we have all seven chakras. Organic portals only have the first three while we are alive, our, our chakras are going to come in and out of balance. They're going to ebb and flow in and out of balance because that's how we learn. That's how we grow. That's how we create friction. And that friction from those opposing forces of our own thoughts, our own false sense of self competing with the true sense of self are going to cause those, those chakras to constantly weave in and out. But that friction is necessary 
for your soul to refine itself. So if you think your chakras are just balanced and are going to stay balanced and that's just that, you've been either you've been scanned or you're dead and you don't know it. Because if you're still alive, they're constantly going to be um, needing work and attunements. So be very careful. Be very careful with who you give your money to when it comes to spirituality. Be very aware of who these people are that you're giving your money to. Like, look at their resume. If they've only ever just done training courses, I would not personally, I would not go to them. Ask them who they've apprenticed with. Ask them who their teachers are. I'm not, I don't. If they've just done training courses, then you don't need to be given the money. They need to be apprenticing. They need to even Reiki masters have to have teachers too, right? Don't be, don't be, because listen, psychopaths, narcissists, organic portals, they're in all careers and they thrive in the spiritual world. In fact, that's where they're sent mostly to is the spiritual world to derail you. So that's a huge red flag huge red flag if somebody's telling you your chakras are balanced huge red flag okay just wanted to put that out there but i hope that makes sense with the whole idea of matter and soul soul and matter because that is that's basically what a lot of the yoga sutras talk about again with prakriti parusha shiva shakti and that's what we're seeing a lot in the emerald tablets as well this idea that this the vibration of thought of consciousness the spoken word which is the same thing is creating a shakti of the soul an experience of the soul all right, let's go back to what Thoth is saying. Built he then within it great chambers, filled them with forms called from the earth, called from the ether, filled with the wisdom called forth by his mind. Formless was he within his temple, yet he, but was he formed in the image of men, dwelling among them, yet not of them. Strange and far different was he. Chosen he then from among the people, three who became his gateway. Choose he the three from the highest to become his links with Atlantis. Messengers they who carried his counsel to the kings of the children of men. Brought he forth others and taught them wisdom. Teachers they to the children of men. Placed he them on the island of Undal to stand as teacher of the light to men. Each of those who were thus chosen taught must be he before five and ten. Only thus could he have the understanding to bring light to the children of men. Thus there came into, into being the temple, a dwelling place for the master of men. I thought, have ever sought wisdom, searching in darkness and searching in light. Long in my youth, I traveled the pathway, seeking ever new knowledge to gain until after much striving. One of the three to me brought the light, brought he to me the commands of the dweller, called me from the darkness into the light, brought he to me before the dweller, deep in the temple before the great fire. There on the great throne beheld I the dweller. The dweller has been spoken about many times in these temples. Clothed with the light and flashed with fire, down I knelt before the great wisdom, feeling the light Flowing through me in waves, heard I then the voice of the dweller. O darkness, come into the light. Long have ye sought the pathway to light. Each soul on earth that loses its fetters shall, shall, shall soon be made free from the bondage of night. Forth from the darkness have ye arisen. Closer approach the light of your goal. Here ye shall dwell as one of my children. Keeper of records gathered by wisdom, instructed thou of the light from beyond. Ready be thou made to do what is needed, preserver of wisdom through the ages of darkness that shall come fast on the children of men. Live thee here and drink of all wisdom, secrets and mysteries unto thee shall be unveiled. All right. Again. We're seeing that over and over and over again in these Emerald Tablets. We've also seen this in the Yoga Sutras and the Vedic texts. The same thing. Your job, your job on this earth is to undo your bondage. You Only you can do that. Nobody else can do it for you. You, 
And this is what makes me really mad when people are really new to spirituality because they think it's just rainbows and butterflies. No, spirituality gets dark. You need the friction. You have to have friction. You have to have opposing forces. You have to have polarity in order to understand and find wisdom. In the Hathor material coming up this week, tomorrow actually, they say, the Hathor say, do not take away somebody's right to suffer right we we have to in yoga we say don't interrupt somebody's karma i understand that if you have a loved one a child a parent a partner and you see that they're suffering that you want to do everything you can to alleviate that suffering and if they ask you for help you most certainly should help them however you cannot alleviate the suffering you can help them work through it you can be a support system for them but if you try to stop or block someone's karma someone's suffering then you are taking away their ability to ascend you have to experience the descent into hell before you can ascend into heaven so we have the, the Emerald Tablet saying this. We have the Yoga Sutra saying this. We have the Hathors from the Egyptian Hathor Mystery School saying this as well. We have all these stories of these deities that descended into hell and rose again. It's all a metaphor. It is a metaphor of what you have to go through in order to understand your own soul. You cannot understand something you cannot gain wisdom from something unless you have been in it. That is why the symbol for yoga is the lotus flower. The lotus flower has to come up through the mud and the muck in order for the petals to open and bloom. Do not interrupt somebody else's suffering. Don't do it. I know you think you're helping, but by trying to do that, you are acting in service to self selfishly for you instead of service to others be a support system for someone when they're going through something teach them what you know get them a good yoga teacher or therapist but you have to allow them to go through it you have to you have to i have to do it listen there's someone i know that is in total hell right now and i've tried to reach out and help but instead, I've been abused in return, so I have backed away. They're going to have to go through it themselves. And that's fine. All right. So let's go back and look at what, what Doriel has to say. In the temple, the dweller was at most times unmanifested. That is, the physical body which he occupied from time to time remained in the temple while consciousness which he was manifested elsewhere. Three from among the highest developed of men were chosen to be messengers of the dweller. They were carefully trained in their work by the dweller, while through them he chose others and had them placed on Unal's opposite, on Undal's opposite Unal to be teachers and priests of to Atlantis. These later were the priests, scientists, and philosophers. Each of them was taught for 15 years by the three before they were allowed to teach others. Yep. You in, in, in a yoga, traditional yoga, like real yoga, not the shitty yoga teacher trainings that are fake, that that fake ass company, the Yoga Alliance runs. In India, it's you're, you're like talking 15, 20 years before you're allowed to teach. You can't microwave yourself to enlightenment. Enlightenment. You, you can't leapfrog over certain lessons. You have to go through time with master teachers time yourself to experience the ups and the downs the ebbs and the flow with your own guide before you can start guiding others that's why i say when you look at resumes of healers or teachers who did they apprentice with not where did they train who did they apprentice with who are their teachers who's their current teacher I have a current teacher, I've apprenticed, and I'm authorized. Be very careful about who you are having heal you. And I like that they for 15 years, 
no exceptions. And this was in Atlantis when people were way more consciously aware than we are now, and they were still doing 15 years' time with teachers. There's no exception to this rule. None. Thoth made his first contact with the dweller through one of the three messengers. He was led before the dweller in the temple in the place of the great fire. This fire was not the fire of light, but the radiation caused by the junction of the space to the temple and the space with Amente, which again, if you want more information on Amente, go back and review the first and second tablet. Thoth was led before the dweller who seated on the throne reflected the light from the gateway to Thoth. He appeared to be literally clothed with fire. He was informed by the dweller that he was chosen to be the keeper of records, for the dweller could look into man's future, knowing the changes in consciousness would eventually bring a wave of units of consciousness of lower development to Earth. It's where we are. He also knew the destruction of parts of Earth's surface must come, so steps must be taken so that nothing would be lost. Thoth had earned his great privilege by his own effort yeah people aren't born special i mean we're all born special we're all special but you're not born and just because you were born you're given a job to be this or that no there has to be effort on your part right and i think the church uh in part is guilty of making us feel like certain people are special and certain people are aren't because of the lies they tell us about Yahshua. Yahshua went through many years of training too. There's effort. You have to earn your place, right? You're not just born and there you are. You got a crown on your head. No, no. You're not just born a channeler and a messenger of God. No, you have to go through your own shit. You have to break some of your own bondages. All right, so even Thoth went through, we, we've seen that in these first few tablets, Thoth went through hell and back to start to understand, to become enlightened. And Thoth is not a god. He said that many times in the first and second, ta second tablet. He's a teacher. That's it. He's a teacher. All right, the reference to the dweller as the master of cycles is reference to earth cycles, not cosmic cycles. He was the guardian of man's progress from one earth cycle to another. Thoth asked for wisdom to be given to him so that he could pass the knowledge he has given to man. Thoth has promised eternal life so that he may fulfill his purpose. He remained in the temple until, until he received his full illumination. Thoth used the knowledge given to him to penetrate the secrets of space, time, and matter in these discoveries, even more greater secrets. In the latter days of Atlantis, the grave weight of consciousness, which had once occupied the bodies of Earthmen, had passed to Venus. And consciousness, which occupied the bodies of the masses, were from Mars. There were more naturalistic the preceding consciousness and looking to the darkness instead of the light opened Yong Song Thoth, the gateway to the cycle below. Some of the consciousness of the preceding waves were attracted by material power and entered into this plane. It was perhaps this part of their nature which had kept them from going on with their fellows. The one who opened the door to the cycle below must be the master, else he will not be so balanced in power that he can keep those those from below from coming up. While men were doing this, the dweller was detached from his body and projected to where it was taking place. So that rings very true with what we read of the law of one, the different dimensions when the planet starts to move and shift. That's what we know about the fall of Atlantis. At first it was Lumeria, then it was Atlantis, then Atlantis fell, which is the apocalypse. Then there was the tribulation, then there was Tartaria, the a thousand years of peace. And then from Tartaria came the mud floods, which put us in Gog and Magog, where we are now. We're at the end of the story now, which means now the earth ascends into a new density, which brings about even more cycles. And so that is exactly what they're saying. There's this ebb and flow of cycles happening among this planet. Okay, so let's go back to Thoth. Then answered I the masters of cycles saying, O light that descends to men, give thou to me thy wisdom that I might be a teacher of men. Give thou of thy light that I may be free. Spoke to then to me again the master. Age after age shall ye live through your wisdom. I, when o'er Atlantis the ocean waves shall roll, holding that light, though hidden in darkness, ready to come whene'er there shalt be called. 
called go thee now and learn greater wisdom grow thou through light to infinities all long that i dwelt in the temple of the dweller until at last i was one with the light Followed I then the path to the star plains, followed I then the pathway to light. Deep into earth's heart, I followed the pathway, learning the secrets below as above, learning the pathway to the halls of Amente, learning the law that balances the world. To earth's hidden chambers, pierced I by my wisdom, deep through the earth's cr crust into the pathway, hidden for ages from the children of men unveiled before me ever more wisdom until i reached a new knowledge found that all is part of an all great and yet greater than all that we know searched i infinity's heart through the ages deep yet deeper more mysteries i found the more i learn the less i know right now as i look back through the ages now that wi i wisdom is boundless ever grown great through the ages one with infinities greater than all light there was an ancient atlantis yet darkness too was hidden in all fell from the light into the darkness some who had risen to the heights among men proud they became because of their knowledge proud were they of their place among men deep delved into them the forbidden open the gateway that led to below sought they to ever gain more knowledge but seeking to bring it up from below and i'm going to go ahead and finish off off reading here then we're going to go back and look at doriel's commentary he who descends be below must have balance else he is bound by lack of our light open they then by their knowledge pathways forbidden to men that's powerful right that's why you have to descend before you can ascend right you got to go down and have balance in the lower parts of yourself your your lower hell placed parts got to find balance there before you can even touch the light But in his temple, all seeing the dweller lay in his aguanti, while through Atlantis his soul roamed free. Saw he the Atlanteans by their magic, opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. Fast fled his soul then back to his body. Up he rose from his aguante, called he the three mighty messengers gave the commands that shattered the world deep near earth's crust to the halls of amente swiftly descended the dweller called he then on the powers the seven lords wielded changed the earth's balance down down sank atlanta atlantis beneath the dark waves so we've talked about the seven lords and previous to uh tablets those are the seven chakras which i know i've looked for they're going to be talked about again in continuing template uh tablets all right that's your chakras shattered the gateway that had been opened shattered the doorway that led down below all of the islands were shattered except unal in part of the island of the sons of the dweller preserved he them to be teachers lights on the path for those to come after lights for the lesser children of men it's the second time he's referenced in the in the very first verse of the very first tablet he says i'm thoth i'm an atlantean teacher and i'm writing these tablets for you as in us of gog and magog as in myself and you watching right now so saying this that preserved he them to be teachers lights on the path for those to come after so when we have mr fox back on we are going to be talking about the law of one he's speaking about the wanderers i've been told that i'm a wanderer which makes sense because all of my life every description of a wanderer fits what's happened to me in my life a lot of you are probably wanderers too we were chosen to come back because we our soul even though we went through the same amnesia that everybody else went through our soul had reached a certain level of understanding within our consciousness to come back and help man push forward in this timeline right all right called he then i thought before him gave me commands for all i should do saying take thou o thoth all of your wisdom take all of your records take all of your magic go forth as a teacher of men go forth preserving the records until in time light grows among men 
light shalt thou be all through the ages, hidden yet found by enlightened men over all earth. Give we ye power, free though to give it or take it away. Gather thou now the sons of Atlantis, take them and flee them to the people of the rock caves. Fly to the land of the children of Cam, and the children of Cam are Egypt, which are the Atlanteans, which is here in the southeast of the United States, not in Africa. Then gather I the sons of Atlantis into the spaceship I brought all my records, brought the records of the sucking Atlantis, gathered I all my powers, instruments, and many of mighty magic. Up then we rose on the wings of the morning, high we rose above the temple, leaving behind the tree and the dweller deep in the halls, neath the temple, down near the waves sank the great temple, closing the pathways to the lords of the cycle, cycles, yet ever to him who was knowing." Open shall be the path to Amente. Fast fled we then on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of Kemp, Egypt. There by my power I conquered and ruled them, raised I to light the children of Kemp. And we already saw that, like this first or second tablet, where after the fall of Atlantis, Thoth and his posse come back to try to help the people because the people from Atlantis that remained after the great flood, after the great fall of Atlantis were struck with so much. And they went from living these really high in tech, high technology enlightened lives to being barbaric for being caveman. And we saw that in the first second tablet where Thoth comes back. They actually try to kill them because they're so scared by what they're seeing with Thoth that he has to calm them down and say, no, 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 it's okay. Now we have to rebuild. Now you got to go through these cycles of darkness in order to find the light again to remember who you are. And by remembering who you are, I mean that you're a soul. Period. End of story. That you're just a soul. That's all you are. Deep neath the rock, I buried my spaceship, waiting the time when the man might be free. Over the spaceship, erect a marker in the form of a lion that, that like unto man. I think I know what they're talking about. The Sphinx. We'll see with Doriel's commentary in a minute. There neath the, the images rest yet in my spaceship, forth to be brought, which shall arise. Know ye, O man, that far in the future, invaders shall come from out of the deep. Then awaken ye who have wisdom. Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. That is wild. So, know ye, O man, that far in the future, invaders shall come from out of the deep, then awaken ye, O, to have wisdom. What the controllers have done very awful, terrible things, but what's one thing they have done? They've awoken us. They poked the bear. Deep near the, near the image lies my secret. Search and find in the pyramid I built. Each to the other is the keystone. Each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind me. Seek in the doorway to life shall be thine. Seek thou in my period, pyramid, deep in the passage that ends in the wall. Use the thou seven of, key of the seven and open thee pathway will fall. Now unto thee I give my wisdom. Now unto thee I give my way. Follow the pathway, solve thou my secrets. Until thee I have shown the way. So let's go back and look at Doriel's commentary over this last part. He says, when the dweller saw what was taking place, he returned to his body and called the messengers and sent them through Atlantis, bringing certain ones to Undal. The dweller then descended to Amente and passed there a force chambers opening to the channel through which the earth balances passes the inner earth. When the pyramid of the forces passes, he drew up the power of the seven and changed the balance of earth from one channel to another and closed the old channel. The resulting sinking of Atlantis shattered the opening by destroying the space warping machine set up by the Atlanteans. Thoth is called before the dweller and commanded to go forth to the land still above water, taking those from Undal and removing the records of the ancient wisdom, which again reflects back to the first and second tablet where he talks about hiding the wisdom underneath the earth and having certain priests guide it until a time as this, until we got here in Gog and Magog. Thoth is called before the dweller and commanded to go forth from the land still above the water, taking those from Indal and removing the records from the ancient wisdom. He is commi commissioned as a teacher or conveyor of the light. 
Thoth gathered together the records, scientific mm -hmm. instruments, and machines, and with the wise men of Atlantis, entered a spaceship and flew to Kim. The motive power of the spaceship was energy extracted from the sun and stored electricity as one form of this force, but qualified by the emanations from the pyramid of force. When the spaceship had left, the dweller sealed the temple and sank it and Udal beneath the waters. He and three then went elsewhere. Thoth arrived in Egypt and conquered the barbarians, which again goes back to the first and second tablet. He then buried the spaceship and certain um, implements of warfare beneath the great rock, was, which was then carved as the Sphinx, a lion. When the time arrives that invaders from the space attack Earth, it will be brought forth to repel them. Thoth gives a key for opening the hidden passages from the pyramids to the Sphinx, the key... The key will open the doorway to the room, which opens the path to Amente. And that spaceship, in my opinion, is underneath Tennessee. Because um, Memphis, Tennessee, which is on the Mississippi River, River, which is actually the Nile. If you look at some of the Tartarian stuff, there was a huge sphinx that used to be in Memphis. There's pictures of people at the turn of the century, early 1900s, sitting on the sphinx in Memphis. The controllers got rid of it. So in my opinion, the spaceship... Thoth spaceship is under Tennessee. All right, you guys, I'm going to in in this episode out with the reading of the Emerald Tablets straight through Tablet 5. Oft dream I of buried Atlantis, lost in the ages that have passed into night. Eon on eon, thou existed in beauty, a light shining through the darkness of night. Mighty in power, ruling the earthborn, lord of the earth in Atlantis's day. King of the nations, master of wisdom, light through Suntal, keeper of the way, dwelt in his temple, the master of Unal, light of the earth in Atlantis's day, master he from the cycle beyond us, living in bodies as one among men. Not as the earthborn, he was from beyond us, son of a cycle, advanced beyond men. Know ye, O man, that harlot the master, was never one with the children of men. Far in the past time, when Atlantis grew as a power, appeared there one with the key of wisdom, showing the way of light to all. Showed he to all men the path of attainment, way of the light that flows among men. Mastering darkness, leading the man's soul upward in heights that were one with the light. Divided the kingdoms he into sections, Ten were they ruled by the children of men. Upon another he built a temple, built but not by the children of men. Out of the ether called he its substance, molded and formed by the power of Utolan. Into the forms he built with his mind. Mile upon mile it covered the island, space upon space it grew in its might. Black yet not black, but dark with the space-time deep in its heart the essence of light. Swiftly the temple grew into being, molded and shaped by the word of the dweller. Called from the formless into a form, built he then within it the great chambers, filled them with forms called forth from ether, filled them with the wisdom called forth by his mind. Formless was he within his temple, yet was he formed in the image of men. Dwelling among them, yet not of them, strange and far different was he from the children of men. Chose he then from among the people three who became his gateway. Chose he the three from the highest to become his links with Atlantis, messengers they who carried his counsel to the kings of the children of men. Brought he forth others and taught them wisdom, teachers they to the children of men. Placed he them on the island of Undal to stand as teachers of light to men. Each of those who were thus chosen taught must be for year five and ten. Only thus could he have the understanding to bring light to the children of men. Thus there came into the temple a dwelling place for the master of men. I thought have ever sought wisdom, searching in darkness and searching in light. Looking in my youth, I travel the pathway, seeking ever new knowledge to gain, until after much striving, one of the three brought me to the light. Brought he to me the commands of the dweller, 
called me from darkness into the light, brought he me before the dweller deep in the temple before the great fire. There on the great throne beheld I the dweller, clothed with the light and flashed with fire. Down I knelt before the great wisdom, feeling the light flowing through me in waves, heard I then the voice of the dweller, O darkness, come into the light. Long have ye sought the pathway to light. Each soul on earth that loses its fetters shall soon be made free from the bondage of night. Forth from the darkness have ye arisen, closer approached the light of your goal. Here ye shall dwell as one among my children, keeper of records, gathered by wisdom. Instrument thou of light from beyond, ready be thou made to what is needed, preserver of wisdom through the ages of darkness, that shall come fast on the children of men. Live thee here and drink of all wisdom, secrets and mysteries, until thee shall unveil. Then answered I the master of cycles, saying, O light that descendeth to men, give thou to me of thy wisdom, that I might be a teacher of men, give thou of thy light, that I may be free. Spoke then to me again the master, age after age shall you live through your wisdom. I, when o'er Atlantis the ocean waves roll, holding the light though hidden in darkness, ready to come whene'er thou shalt call, go thee now and learn great wisdom. Grow thou through light to infinity's all. Long then I dwelt in the temple of the dweller, until at last I was one with the light. Followed I then the path to the star plains, followed I then the path to the light. Deep into earth's heart I followed the pathway, learning the secrets below as above. Learning the pathway to the halls of Amente, learning the law that balances the world. To earth's hidden chambers, pierced I by my wisdom. Deep through the earth's crust into the pathway, hidden for ages from children of men. Unveiled before me ever more wisdom until I reached a new knowledge. Found that all is a part of an all great and yet greater than all that we know. Searched I infinity's heart through the ages, deep and yet deeper, more mysteries I've found. Now as I look back through the ages, now I that wisdom is boundless, ever grown greater throughout the ages, one with infinities greater than all. Light there was an ancient Atlantis, yet darkness too was hidden in all, fell from the light into the darkness. Some who had risen to the heights among men, proud they became because of their knowledge, proud they were of their place among men. Deep dwelled they in the forbidden, opened that gateway that led to below, sought they to gain ever more knowledge, but seeking to bring it up from below. He who descends below must have balance, else he is bound by lack of our light, opened by then by their knowledge pathways forbidden to men. Built in his temple, all seeing the dweller lay in his aguante, while through Atlantis his soul roamed free. Saw he the Atlanteans by their magic opening the gateway that would bring to earth a great woe. Fast fled his soul, then back to his body. Up he arose from his aguante, called he the three mighty messengers, gave the commands that shattered the world. Deep Neath earth's crust to the halls of Amente, swiftly descends the dweller, called he then on powers, the seven lords wielded, changed the earth's balance, down sank Atlantis beneath the dark waves, shattered the gateway that had been opened, shattered the doorway that led down below. All of the islands were shattered except Unal, and part of the island of the sons of the dweller preserved he them to be teachers, lights on the path for those to come after, lights for the lesser children of men. Called he then I thought before him, I gave my commands for all I should do, saying, Take thou, O Thoth, all your wisdom, take all your records, take all your magic, go forth as a teacher of men. Go thou forth, preserving the records, until in time light grows among men. Light shall thou be all through the ages, hidden yet found by enlightened men. Over all earth give we ye we power. Over all earth give we ye power. Free thou to give or take it away. Gather thou now the sons of Atlantis. Take them and flee them to the people of the rock caves. Fly to the land of the children of Kem. Then I gathered the sons of Atlantis into the spaceship. I brought all my records. 
brought the records of sunken Atlantis, gathered I all of my powers, instruments, many of mighty magic. Up then we rose as wings of the morning, high we rose above the temple, leaving behind the three and the dweller deep in the halls neath the temple, down neath the waves sank the great temple, closing the pathway to the lords of the cycles, yet ever to him who has knowing, open shall be the path of Amente. Fast fled we then on the wings of the morning, fled to the land of the children of Kem. There by my power I conquered and ruled them. Raised I to light the children of Kem. Deep neath the rocks I buried my spaceship, waiting the time when man might be free. Over the spaceship erected a marker in the form of a lion yet unlike man. There neath the image rests yet my spaceship, forth to be brought when need shall arise. Know ye, O man, that far in the future invaders shall come from out of the deep, then awaken ye who have wisdom. Bring forth my ship and conquer with ease. Deep neath the images lies my secret. Search and find the pyramids I built. Each to the other is the keystone, each the gateway that leads into life. Follow the key I leave behind me. Seek and the doorway to life shall be thine. Seek thou in my pyramid deep in the passage that ends in the wall. Use thou the key of the seven and open thee the pathway will fall. Now unto thee I give my wisdom. Now unto thee I give my way. Follow the pathway, solve thou my secrets, until thee I have shown the way. <laughs>